still somehow he managed to continue to write, even though he had completely jacked up his wrist writing this book. And, you know, but he was pushing out big volume after volume, almost as if he was paying penance to some lost phantom. And, you know, but that was to our benefit, except these things just got harder and harder to hold. I remember when I was reading in bed a lot and I had this book holder thing that usually could handle any work. But, you know, in this case, I had to resort to the Kindle version. But what's worse is when the words within the work just don't do it for you anymore. And you have to start slicing and dicing and creating your own hybrid work out of the different ingredients. And, you know, sometimes you get this hope that uh, it, it turns out to be anything other than the usual Frankenstein monstrosity. I thought it'd be interesting to take the work of Joseph McElroy, who's like the acknowledged contemporary master of complex syntax, and mix his sentences in randomly with the complete opposite. Murakami over here sounded interesting in theory, but I could easily identify McElroy's sentences because I chose a section with the, the Hermit and the Statue of Liberty. And but there was like this thread going through this work about like this guy talking about the beauty of his own cock. And, uh, you know, turns out it was a narrator of the Murakami story, just sort of doing a humble brag in a way. And then I got to thinking, well, why don't we just add more dick to the mix, you know? But then figured this would be like too much dude bro. So why don't we take some Nancy Friday? And this is a book of women's sexual fantasies and also mix in some Gary L. Lutz and see what happens then. And holy shit, I'll try to link it in the description, but uh, yeah, the sentences of Lutz, but there was also the subplot of this girl getting her ass stuffed with whipped cream. Oh! But what happens when your own words just cut up the body like shrapnel as it explodes into the world completely dead? And you have this hope, though, that somehow you can harness technology as a way of creating the works for you by using different devices and constraints and algorithms that no one would be able to reverse engineer. But is this really art? David Hockney had recently created some works using the iPad and exhibited them and I figured why not do the same thing except with writing so we could take some of my favorite poets here and take the letters of their names and convert them into colors that kind of match up with this synesthesia that I've got but if you blur your eyes a little bit you get this overall color that then can be imported into Procreate as different layers and so we can kind of paint with their words. Daniel Popic, yeah, this guy's writing is really um, sort of advanced and cerebral, and but yeah, he's not afraid to play around with syntax. I kind of consider him like the new blood of a certain type of writing, and um, probably one of my favorite contemporary poets. Bersenbrugge, yeah, she's one of my all-time favorites. Um, she's sort of like not really considered part of that language movement, I'd say, but more of like this collagist who works in a poetic line that's real similar to just prose poetry. Ron Silliman, this guy, his book, The Age of Huts, one of the most amazing things I've read recently. It's just this big poem that uh, passages start to cycle through and repeat themselves, but they just accumulate more words. And it has this effect that I've never seen before. It's sort of like this um, nostalgia through repetition. And it's, it's pretty amazing. I think you can consider him legit like a, a language poet. John Yao, this guy, yeah, like My Heart is That Eternal Rose Tattoo. That book is just amazing. Like um, prose poetry, just really colorful words. Scalapino, yeah, she's pretty much language and she does some pretty cool things with um, repetition as well. Ashbury, yeah, like how can you not consider him like this grand uncle that's floating above it all? And, but, you know, he kind of comes from like a different... Sort of like the certain French tradition. So the results here are kind of like what Ashbery might do, except magnified to the point where not just the words, but even the letters get chopped up by this fractured vision where nothing comes out undamaged. But you're still in this horrific, pathetic state of wanting to express something, but having nothing significant to express, the hand keeps moving even though the arms are on fire. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you reach this state of random intoxication that's higher than any of your own humiliating fantasies and you're at the shore again but this time turning away from the words and jumping into the water to rescue what was lost
now it's only this random river where sometimes you make out this once familiar shape who you still hope, despite the impossible, you can somehow bring back. I know if I find you, I'll have to leave the earth. So why am I still here searching?